Hello, I'm Rob Bowen, once again of What's a Budget Films, and I'm here to kind of wrap things up on Beware the Masked One with a, a bit of a making of that kind of talks about the process of, of putting this film together because this was this film was uh, quite a bit different than anything else that we had tried to do so far. And it was also very different in the fact that so much of it just kind of fell apart right uh, right before filming or, or during filming even. There was just so many things that we had to contend with and so many hurdles that we had to uh, take uh, to get this in the can in the one day that we had. Um, in fact, uh, again, we, if you've seen the film, hopefully you're not watching this if you haven't seen the film. But um, we had we worked with Rachel and Dan, both fantastic. Can't wait to work with either of them again. Uh, but we also had Alexandra Gale. She was the young girl, uh, young Carol, uh, in the film. And she was actually a last-minute replacement. That was one of the things that fell apart. First off, we had I had set up to have an assistant that would kind of help carry things around the trails and help us move from one location or one spot on the trail to the next and get just everything in, you know, where we needed it and just help out in any way we could or they that they could. And he had to cancel the last second. He canceled the day before the shoot. Um, we were, uh, and I can't fault him because he had to take, you know, he had to pick up another shift at work uh, and he was able to do so. Uh, we weren't financially in a position to be able to, you know, pay any of the, the workers on the film or anyone that helped on the film. So we were basically just, you know, begging and borrowing uh, help where we could get it. And at the last minute, it fell apart and we didn't have any help. So it put a lot of extra strain on uh, myself as director and on the crew, too, because they had to pitch in and help out, which I, they, they didn't have any problem with doing. But I didn't want to ask more of them than I already was. I mean, both of them live in Denver, so we were already asking them to drive down and, and give of their time and everything for free, uh, just based on the project alone. Um, and Dan, especially, I felt bad. Uh, the guy had no lines in the film, even. He had nothing to do. He didn't even get to show his face. He's just an ominous figure that just keeps appearing in places. So I really felt bad asking that of him and then even asking more and being like, well, can you help us get this over here? And can you do this? Um, so it was, it was really great. They were fantastic to work with and they were so accommodating and so open and so just ready to, to do anything to, you know, help out. It was great. Um, I, I, again, I enjoyed having them as part of the team and the, I, I leaned on them more than I wanted to. Uh, but, uh, Never more than they were prepared to be leaned on, so it was fantastic. They were a great crew to have along. Uh, to have along, um, but Alexandra had uh, she was a happy accident because the girl that we had set up to actually play that role was supposed to arrive midday uh, or cl close to the end of the day of filming. Uh, we only within the last two hours, and about mid afternoon, while we were on the trail, I got the phone call from her mother saying that you know there was an incident with her uh, other baby and they had to go to urgent care uh, so we couldn't get Alexander or we couldn't get uh, their daughter to the set uh, so we had to find Alexandra and again we didn't know of anyone else we were all on uh, the trail going well who can we call what can we do I called uh, everyone I could and we finally got in touch with Russ Heward you may remember me talking about Russ before he's helped out on other films he helped co-write the script here and we finally got in touch with Russ and he happened to have a neighbor in the area who was home uh, Frankie Alexandra's mom and he went and asked Frankie if Alexandra would you know be willing to participate or would like to participate and be able to uh, they asked Alexandra she was up for it and we got them to come down in the last half an hour to an hour of our day of filming so again it was just kind of a, a, a real big scramble there for a while and, and kind of didn't know what we were going to do um, be, because originally the girl that we were supposed to use uh, when her mom called, you know, she was like, well, maybe we can just reschedule. And, and I thought that that would be a good idea. But again, I was already asking so much of Dan. He had come down from Denver once and I didn't want to have to ask that of him again, especially since, again, like I said, he had no lines in the film. Uh, but he came down... Um, uh, uh, and you know, so he he brought like equipment for us to use too. So again, he had already done so much for us. So I just didn't feel right even asking uh, for that extra step of can you you know maybe come down another day so that we can get you know these shots these sides with just the little girl. 
So we had to uh, go into, again, scramble mode, and it, it did pay off. I was really happy with uh, Alexandra. She, she did a great job. Uh, she was very, you know, uh, she, she was our last-minute savior. You know, she basically saved the, the film from just being lost uh, to, you know, everyone's schedule. And as we tried to get those last shots and those very important shots, so yeah, it was that was kind of interesting to see all of that just kind of fall apart uh, right at the last, but still be able to, you know, rally us together as a cast and crew and and just make us kind of commit even more to to making it happen. So yeah, I was really proud of that. And Rachel, um, again, can't wait to work with her again. Would love to. She. Um, and in fact, she had this. She had an, uh, a couple notes at first. She thought that her performance, perhaps, especially uh, in the scene where the masked one shows up behind her on the, you know, in her little hiding space, um, she thought that her reaction there should have been bigger, uh, and that she wished she had done differently. And I was like, but actually, I really liked the 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 performance for a couple of reasons. And one, it resonated that. In a lot of horror films, when you see someone, when you see the character who's being pursued or chased or whatever, they basically lose all sim all sense of themselves and they just lose control because of the the declining, you know, uh, grip that they have on on what's happening. And that wasn't the case with Carol. I liked the strength that Carol kept throughout and the the presence that she kept throughout. She knew what to do next. She knew where she had to go. She she kept all of that together. So I, I liked her performance. It was. There was still that element of fear and, and you know knowing that something's not right, something's going on, but that element of strength never left the character. So I loved that performance. And after we had that talk and that exchange, she, uh, Rachel actually came around and agreed with me there. So that was, uh, that was very nice to, to see. And again, I, I can't wait to work with her again. Dan, uh, on, I, I actually had set a, a next project for. We were going to do a comedy for What's a Budget Films called The Suitcase. That was going to be our next project, but unfortunately, there's been a couple of roadblocks thrown up in our way. Uh, one literal one, they're actually working on the road in the area that I wanted to do the filming, so the noise and everything uh, of that and just the, the look that you know that would put into the film is not exactly what I was going for and not something that I would like to contend with, all of the excess noise and trying to get all of our sound and everything done right while we're, you know, while all that is going on just up the road from where I wanted to record. So that threw uh, up some roadblocks, literally quite. And the other one was there's just very, again, I've, I've tried to keep everything that we're doing with what's a budget very low budget and no budget if, if possible. Um, like the next project that I'm going to be working on, uh, There Came a Knocking, which is another little horror short that we've got. But um, So there were very few props in the suitcase. There was just a couple of props. But even at, at the point that, I, that we're at right now, we just don't have the funding to pick up these few little props that we needed and uh, so that also kind of got in the way uh, of us being able to proceed with that as the next project so hopefully we'll get all that sorted they'll get the road construction done and we'll be rolling on with that uh, first part of next year perhaps I don't know when we'll be able to put that together but Dan and Steve Austin uh, who was part of catching up you may remember he's going to be in that as well so we've got both of them set and ready to go we just have to kind of get our location all sorted now and have to get those couple props worked out but um, look for those to come but in the meantime uh, so I will be working with Dan again soon so I'm hoping to work with them both because they just they did so much for this film and Dan especially in in what little he had to do he was just a champ <laughs> I felt you know he had the 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 second skin suit on underneath his clothes so that his face would be completely blacked out you wouldn't see his neck or hair or any of that and so, you know, he would have to, like, in between takes, take that off so he could actually see good enough to, to navigate the trail and the hiking. Um, so he just went through so much, and it started raining on us, and he's in that suit and just everything, um, which he was actually probably the warmest at that point. So that may have worked out for him uh, in his favor, but he actually, he, he even came up with a great scene, too, and I felt so bad uh, as the director and editor when I had to cut it because he had this idea of uh, when the trail first begins and Carol goes out on the trail there's a drain pipe that's underneath the area and it, it goes down into this ditch and 
I didn't even think about using that and incorporating it in the film at all. But Dan had this idea of him being in the pipe and coming out as she walked over the top and just kind of watching her walk off, uh, beginning her hike. And it was really great, and it was creepy as hell, and it resonated with the, you know the whole creep factor that we were trying to establish with the film. But ultimately, I had to cut it because there were two reasons. One, it didn't. It, for anyone who recognized the area that we were filming in, they would notice that the scene that preceded it right before that was just like a, a few yards away. So we had this moment where she turns around and actually sees him for the second time and starts to you know go, well, that's a little bit odd. Something's not right here. And she goes. Uh, she continues on the way. That would have been taking place just right on top of each other, uh, as far as location wise. And while we were able to fudge some of the things and like shoot in areas that were kind of unrecognizable, those two scenes right back to back just didn't feel like they would work for anyone who actually recognized the the area. And I've had lots of, I've had lots of comments to that effect where people are like, oh great, you know, Red Mountain. I was just hiking up there the other day and stuff like that. So there are people who recognize that, and I felt like it wouldn't have worked in. You know, with that, also, I didn't want there necessarily to be the idea of him following her established yet. You know, again, she uh, had only seen him in a couple places, so it was still kind of weird the second time he showed up. But she still, uh, I didn't want that idea yet that you know he was necessarily following her, and also the the movement that that put into it. I didn't have the mass one moving until the very end of the film. I, I liked the idea of him just ominously popping up and just showing up places. So there was that kind of you know surprise to it where he was just motionless the whole time. I felt that added a, an un, a underlying creep factor to it. So we had this scene where he's coming out of the pipe, so we actually had movement from him for the first time early on in the film. So that didn't seem to track right with the way, the, the mood that I was already trying to build and establish and the way I had written it. So unfortunately, again, great scene, creepy as hell, but we had to cut it ultimately from the film. Um, and so I always felt bad about that. But Dan was just full of ideas. He was you know, coming up with ways. He was always thinking and contributing more. And that's the kind of actors that you like to work with because they're always stepping up the game. They're always introducing these ideas. And even if the ideas don't ultimately work, it, it forces you to kind of rethink some of the things that you've already set into motion and the things that you wrote and the things that you've directed and it makes you reevaluate the direction uh, that you're, you're taking it and going, well, maybe what if we did this? Maybe it would actually do this. And then you have to, you know, kind of, well, no, that doesn't track with this or it doesn't work ultimately with that. So there are, there are so many great advantages to having people on set who are that active and that involved and, and trying to, again, just add more to it and, and bring another level because it, you can never hurt your project by trying to, you know, evaluate ways to improve it and, and try to increase, in this case, the level of creep factor that we had in the film. So that would have been really great, but uh, uh, again, ultimately, it didn't track and we had to cut it. But there you've seen that. So we have a lot more coming up. We hope to you know, again, roll out the suitcase. We've got another little horror short coming for you, so be on the lookout for that. Thanks so much for joining us and supporting What's a Budget Films. We hope to uh, keep you entertained. Thanks. <laughs>